Hi everyone, welcome to the 2020 City of Hamilton Arts Awards. Woo! Woo! I have to, I have to do that myself. Usually there's an audience, so I have to make myself pumped up and feel better. Anyway, my name is Laura Ellis and I'll be your host for the digital fancy pantsy presentation of the Arts Awards this year. Now, as you're probably aware, we're doing things a little differently this year. We, we usually announce the Arts Awards recipients at the live event that attracts over 500 members of Hamilton's arts community and their supporters. And while we certainly miss getting together in person, I know I do, I'm really tired of talking only to my cats, um, we're excited to use this opportunity to celebrate Hamilton's amazing artists in a brand new way. So, over the next five videos, we will profile all 61 nominees and showcase the incredible work of the award recipients. We are also thrilled to have two feature performances. The Hamilton Youth Poets will be closing the show tonight and Ellis, not, not me Ellis, but like the good musician Ellis, which would be a way better experience for everybody really. <laughs> she will perform in our last video scheduled to air June 20th. The city of Hamilton is situated upon the traditional territories of the Erie, Neutral, Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas. This land is covered by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, which was an agreement between the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabek to share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. We further acknowledge that this land is covered by the Between the Lakes Purchase 1792 between the Crown and Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Today, the city of Hamilton is home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island, North America. And we recognize that we must do more to learn about that rich history of this land so that we can better understand our roles as residents, neighbors, partners, and caretakers. We are thrilled to be kicking off Hamilton Arts Week. The citywide celebration promises to showcase the resilience and resonance of Hamilton's creative community with an array of digital presentations from June 11th to June 20th. The City of Hamilton Arts Awards is proud to be a part of Hamilton Arts Week. Be sure to check out Hamilton Arts Council's website. You can catch their lineup of signature events, including dance, literary arts, music, visual art, theater art, all the stuff, man. Audiences can observe, interact, collaborate, and discover new skills from the safety of their own home. Maybe it will inspire you to find your own hidden passions. Like painting self-portraits, flower arranging, jewelry making, ooh, creative hairstyling, or, you know, maybe you'll just decide to watch the pros. Now, I would like to turn things over to Mayor Eisenberger to say a few words from the city of Hamilton and to announce the recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award. Greetings from the city of Hamilton and thank you. On behalf of the city of Hamilton and my council colleagues, it's my pleasure to welcome everyone watching tonight as we recognize and honor the arts in Hamilton in this unique video presentation of the City of Hamilton Arts Awards. This is the 44th Arts Awards, an annual tradition of recognizing individual artists for their excellence and contributions to our cultural vitality. We are very proud to have one of the longest running Municipal Arts Awards programs in Canada. Each year, I look forward to coming together with our artistic community to celebrate their achievements. This year is certainly not business as usual as we're unable to celebrate in person, but true to our city's resilient spirit, we could not let the achievement of the 61 nominated artists go unrecognized. Now more than ever, we're realizing that the vital role that the arts and artists play in our city in bringing us joy, wonder, and connection. In this series of five video presentations that will air during Hamilton's Art Arts Week, which runs from June 11th to the 20th, we will celebrate 61 artists nominated for arts awards across 11 categories, including the Shirley Elford Emerging Artist Prize in Arts Education and Community Arts. Thank you to all the artists nominated for your contributions to our community, and I congratulate you on being nominated. 
There are many volunteers who support the 2020 Arts Awards and I thank you for being a part of this important program. I'd like to give a special acknowledgement to the, the nominees, the nominators who work to prepare the nomination packages, the award adjudicators for thoughtfully reviewing each nomination package, and the Arts Award Steering Committee members for their important guidance throughout the program year. The sponsors for supporting emerging artists and their in-kind contributions. This event was originally supposed to take place at Theatre Aquarius DeFasco Centre for the Arts. Uh, we are very grateful to the Vital Arts Centre for so generously providing a home for our event over the years. And finally, thank you to all of you tuning in to celebrate the nominees, the recipients and the arts community in Hamilton. We hope to see you again over the next four episodes, which will include recipient artist showcases as well as local artist performances. Visit www.hamilton.ca slash arts awards for more details. And now I have the pleasure of presenting the Lifetime Achievement Award, which is awarded to an individual in any discipline that has demonstrated remarkable artistic aptitude over an entire career. This esteemed award recognizes outstanding skill in the recipient's field, as well as in a significant contribution to the advancement of the arts in Hamilton and beyond. Before we announce the nominees, however, I'd like to acknowledge the passing of an important contributor to Helen's arts community, Josephine Massarella. Josephine, or Josie, was a filmmaker, curator, and a film teacher. She was also the very first board member coordinating programming at the Factory Media Center. On behalf of everyone watching, I extend my deepest condolences to Josephine's friends and family. And now, please join me in watching a presentation of the 2020 nominees for Lifetime Achievement. Lifetime Achievement Ilana Splite Ilana Splite is a Hamilton born and raised violinist that has taught violin, viola, cello, and bass in Hamilton to thousands of students spanning a career of over 40 years. Former students of hers are now playing throughout the world and include teachers and performers in Hamilton and its Philharmonic Orchestra. Jude Johnson. Jude Johnson is a singer, songwriter, and recording artist for children and adults. Jude is the founder and director of the MAD Creative Art School, where over 9,000 children have explored music, art, and drama. Jude has been the recipient of the Hamilton Arts Award in Music and Arts Education, Woman of the Year, and has been inducted into the Hamilton Gallery of Distinction. Susan Evans Shaw. Susan Evans Shaw's passion for history, be it family, local, or Canadian, generated newspaper articles, contributions to anthologies, and three published books, one on early Hamilton architecture and two guides to Canadian battlefields in Europe. Her fondness for literature is inborn. Membership in literary committees is by choice. She lives in a Hamilton high rise with her two cats, Lottie and Mitzi. What a remarkable group of Hamiltonians. It is now my honor to announce that the recipient of the 2020 Lifetime Achievement Award is Susan Evans Shaw. My sincere congratulations on this well-deserved honor, Susan. Hi, Susan, how are you? I'm fine. Um, Susan, it's so good. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Um, I know we haven't met yet, but I'm hosting, uh, my name is Laura. I'm hosting the Arts Awards online this year. Um, and I, yeah, yeah, which is a, a totally kind of, you know, unpredictable, but really cool and interesting change. And we're doing things a little bit differently this year. So I get to talk to some of the nominees and you're nominated for Lifetime Achievement, right? Right. Well, you must mean a lot to the community, too, because they voted and you totally won. <laughs> right. You're the winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award. 
Yeah, <laughs> congratulations. That's that's so. Is that exciting? I, 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 I'm the winner. Yeah, the winner. Oh my gosh. Oh no, no, I didn't expect that at all. Oh no, you mean oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> well, you obviously deserve it because you know, the jury. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations to Susan Evans Shaw. Now, let's see and hear more about Susan Evans Shaw's work in historical writing. My name is Susan Evans Shaw, and I'm a Hamilton writer. This is my book, Heritage Treasures, the historic homes of Ancaster, Burlington, Dundas, East Flamborough, Hamilton, Stony Creek, and Waterdown. My interest in architecture goes back to my mother. When we, we traveled a great deal around, um, around the country, eastern portions of it, Mum used to point out architectural features. And then I just noticed how interesting the, the architecture in Hamilton was. <coughs> and um, decided that it would be fun to, to sort of put together a publication. And by sheer chance, at somebody's book launch, Jim Lorimer, the publisher, was present. And he happened to uh, be dating a close friend. And when I put the idea to him, he was very interested. And so I collaborated with a friend, Jean Crankshaw, who did the photography for me. And I did all the research into the history of each of the houses. And we put together a uh, a very beautiful book that I'm quite proud of. And from the introduction. The loveliness of the city of Hamilton is one of Ontario's best kept secrets. While Toronto's glass towers glisten like the city of Oz across the lake, Dowdy Hamilton is seen to belch smoke from her mills and factories, unable to shake the blue collar lunch bucket image perpetuated by the misinformed. My colleague Jean Crankshaw and I are not native Hamiltonians, but we have chosen to live here and to live downtown. We are both fond of walking and the one way streets notwithstanding, Hamilton is a good city for walking. Plenty of trees, parks, alleyways, neighborhoods and architecture. Take a look from the escarpment or from the top of a tall building and you'll see from east to west how green the city is. Canopied by all those trees are houses, grand and humbled, and so many of architectural merit. Head of the lake, as the area was called originally, is an area full of history, crammed with event. James Elliott's book about the journeys of Robert Land, if ponies rode men, woke me to the complexity of happenings that began with the American Revolutionary War. After reading the book, I walked up James Street South to have a look at the two pillars from Land Home, now fronting the house of what was the Leather Home. Then I drove down to Barton Street and looked for traces of the house that Robert Land built, although I knew from Eliot's book that it had been demolished in 1928. In the autumn of 2000, a long struggle between a property owner and the architectural conservancy ended when the historic stone mansion Bellevue, a landmark on the mountain brow and the mate to Whitehurn was pulled down. There was nothing to be done. The building had been derelict for years. The city couldn't or wouldn't contribute to restoration and the cost was too high for most private purses. How many other buildings are threatened? We know countless old places that have been demolished. A project to make a record of the houses and publish something beautiful that would make Hamiltonians sit up and take note seemed a worthwhile enterprise. And so we started. As I drove around the city on errands, I would make notes of houses that looked like possibilities. Jean did the same and also checked web pages for heritage homes. The list grew rapidly, even with our cutoff date of 1914. While we were scurrying about, the city of Hamilton became the new city of Hamilton, and Jim Lorner, by then we had a publisher, pointed out that we would have to extend our boundaries. I guess I have to thank Dave Couric for nominating me and uh, 
those people who gave me references. I just, I still feel rather overwhelmed by it. <laughs> Up next, we have a collaborative performance by members of the Hamilton Youth Poets. The Hamilton Youth Poets, or HYPE, is a community grounded in the belief that all people have important stories to tell. They're people from all different backgrounds who have come together to understand the importance of everyone's story in order to make the places we call home more just and more equitable. Relationships within HYPE are based on a shared love of creative expression through the written and spoken word. Men go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. Men go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. Men go marching one by one, and all the boys seem to have lost their tongues. And they all go marching down to the ground to get out of this place, of this fear, yet they're stuck in the crowd. They shout out, yet they're stuck in the mud, in this place, in this space. Boom, 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 boom. It's too late. He's gone, but he could be replaced with another. And you'll never realize he's disappeared like dust in the wind, gone in a slap forgotten. Just like the tongue of his motherland which was assimilated into broken English and slang words used as sex culture while never given anything but scraps of an identity he had to scavenge like a vulture. Now death is a new trend of youth culture. And we are all soldiers fighting on the land that was supposed to save us yet instead gave us weapons to fight each other. Yes, we have become martyrs. And as their figures disappear, as they march to their deaths, we realize that the casualties in this war have become far too many, and now we have started to take, take notice. They have started to take notice, and now... Moms go marching two by two, hurrah, hurrah. Moms go marching two by two, hurrah, hurrah. Moms go marching two by two to find the justice for the few. And they all go marching down to the ground and the towns and the crowd. And they shout and they plead and they mourn. Boom, 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 boom. And they're torn, see? Piece by piece every day a mother mourns her child. And in her house is an empty room filled with heartbreak and regret and the smell of melancholy that fills the air and rips her apart inside because she believes that she could have done more and she came for more. And is no stranger to trauma or loss or the sounds of the gun that go boom, 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 boom. But she came to this land to find a better life where her children could learn the difference between rights and wrong, yet the only wrong he did was to be at the wrong place at the wrong time, and time is her enemy. Because if the neighborhood doesn't get her other kids first, the oppression will, and she's tired of sleepless nights and won't allow any more bodies to be dropped on her front porch because she is a queen of resilience, and she will go marching down to the ground and the towns, and she'll shout, and she'll tell them about the sound of the gun that goes boom, 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 boom. And the shouts, and the blood, and the tears, and the fear, and the way that they all went marching down. I wake up, my mom makes the same breakfast every morning, two eggs, sunny side up. I don't know why they are so yellow. There is nothing to be happy about. I play PlayStation until I feel I have wasted a significant part of my day. My dad says, you're always on that damn PlayStation. 
He doesn't understand that I am constantly working my mind races to find any reason to be alive, constantly thinking up theories. Nobody wants me. I am of no use. I am not needed. I talk to my friends. They realize something is wrong. I tell them of a life I don't live. Paint a pretty picture of the world being sunny side up. They wouldn't care anyways. I start doing homework that I don't even want to do. Accounting says that I am not doing well financially, that I need to budget. History says that it repeats itself. I refuse to listen. Calculus tells me there are solutions to every problem except for mine. Biology says that depression can be caused by physical, sexual, or mental abuse. Tells me to look back on my life, find out where I suffered abuse, and I tell it I don't remember anything. It then tells me that most likely it is an imbalance of chemicals in my brain and I am scared of pills. Scared that if they don't work there is no solution, no amount of therapy, drugs, or good times that can fix it. They laugh in my face. I go through the motions, help set the table, am silent throughout. I go to my room, turn off the light, the world is dark. I pray for a sleep from which I never wake up. Wake up. Wake up, I wake up. My mother smiles while she makes me breakfast. Two eggs sunny side up. I feel as though the sun rises every time she smiles. I relax by playing PlayStation for most of the day. My dad tells me there are better ways to spend your time, you know. I understand that he only wants what's best for me. For me to grow up the way he did not comfortable. With minimum worry with pure happiness. I talk to my friends. They realize something is wrong. I tell them of a life I don't live, paint a pretty picture of the world being sunny side up. They care about me more than I can even imagine, but if a tree does not believe that it can grow around a fence, even if it is in the nature of the tree, the aftermath is not one worth caring for, one that not even the tree cares about, I don't respond. I attempt to further my education, help set the table for dinner. During dinner, discussions dissolve down to heartwarming laughter designed to disinfect any diabolical thoughts, untie stomach knots. I feel more free. I relax. Watching TV with them, my dad says that the show is unrealistic. He would rather watch a documentary. Rather watch people talk about their real lives. I wonder if it reminds him of childhood. If it reminds him that this is why he works so hard, does it give him motivation to watch people who live lives that are less fortunate than ours, people that grew up like he did? And I appreciate what I have so much more. I go to my room, turn off the light. I choose when the light leaves. I pray for a sleep in which I remember the dreams I have. And when I wake up the next morning, the day will repeat itself, smiles will occur again, and the world will be sunny side up once again. I still dream of an ungendered freedom. I want to be called on by metaphors of name or pronoun like Good morning, moonlight. Hello, good harvest. Where did this dust storm on Mars go? Rename myself by moment. This is how I become and undo this fractured language of womanhood, my silhouette no longer a threat or an answer. It just becomes a body, a shadow's host, a vessel that is worth a home and a human right. I no longer question the intention of others. There is no question. I am embraced without hesitation. I embrace myself without hesitation. I am tired at looking myself to only have questions geared back at me. I don't want to be asked what pronouns I use. Instead, I am asked, are you ocean blue or sky blue? Which history do you carry? How the binary reduces me to the surface. How everyone keeps telling me to pick something. I pick the unruly grassy fields. I pick all eight planets. I pick the sakura blossom and dragonflies. I pick this imaginary world where I am unbounded and nobody bats an eye. The darkest pity party. Me and my shadow exchange horror stories about being black. I say to my shadow, I envy you. 
No one ever questions the quantity of your blackness. You're never too black or not black enough. You are always just simply black. Without question, without interrogation, I envy how your hands have never felt the chill of cuffs, never been presumed guilty until proven dead, because no matter how hard you try, you can never kill a shadow. And my shadow says, I know we both know what it's like to be a walking chalk outline. A shadow's place is either on the ground or against a wall. And in the dark, everything that makes me uniquely beautiful is robbed in the nighttime. And the warmth of my personality and flesh become the tone of nightmares. This skin, nothing more than the fingerprints of a violet night. They label me an angry black man, based my whole existence on throwing shade. And why wouldn't I be angry? I hate the way I stick out in white spaces. I try and comfort my shadow. I say, I envy how close you are to the earth and our roots. You are the origin of black love. The melanin in a shadow is a vow. Watch how easily two shadows become one flesh, and I have never known a love like this. You, the original activist, the first appropriator, I love how you mimic their movements and call it normal. My shadow says, call it conformity. Call it being puppeted. Call it being spoon-fed a culture without spice. Call it anything but normal. Us dark-skinned brothers have never been afforded the luxury of normalcy. Never been afforded the crown of tears, even though we feel the weight of everything on top of us. Even though it's clear we've been on rock bottom for quite some time now, and it's maddening, this code switching. In some lights, a shadow has to split itself in two to fit into a workplace where it's voiceless, tokenized, present at every board meeting and cannot speak. Our glass ceilings the floor give new meaning to overshadow, to be stepped on and stepped over, and we bond over these memories and pre-written destinies, a connection so close it is almost physical. Our kinship, Siamese-like. For even boxers know that on some nights all you have is your shadow fighting with you. But cops know the best way to make shadows scatter in swirling lights. And it seems, with new discriminatory laws and increasing hydro bills, politicians won't stop until every ghetto and prison is flooded with shadows. Hey guys, it's Gizzy from Hype, checking in at the Hamilton Arts Awards. I know everyone's been doing a lot of poetry, but I decided to add some music to rock the house. Yeah, let me get it. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Bold gut, see, it's part of my tone. And I ain't talking about words that I just spoke. And when my flow gets you, that's when my soul with you. Got white folks rocking like this is some rock and roll. Lyrically gifted, so spears forever lifted. That's an image of my vision. Now the truth is what I'm spitting, yeah. I'm just wondering if you ride with me. And if you do, don't stop, hear me. Check. I'm the realest MC that the city's ever heard. Cause you can hear my soul up in every single verse. And with every single word, it's perfectly aligned. Just the with people's minds. And I ain't even gotta try. I can say in 40 words, but you can say in 40 lines. But I play that verse back, multiply it, then divide. Damn. <laughs> And that's the truth, man, I don't like you must be out your damn mind if you ain't rockin' with this guy. Do you rock with me? Do you rock with me? Then don't stop, hear me. Then don't stop, hear me. And do you rock with me? Do you rock with me? It don't stop, hear me, it don't stop, yeah Let me tell you a story about a fine young man That knew he changed the world way before he had a plan Started off with hoops and now I'm rhyming on a loop Every day non-stop, trying to make it to the top Trying to be top dog, trying to be all odds Really trying to find the loop so I can buy my mom that coupe The one with hella the leg room and the drop top roof And until the day come, you can find me in the booth I'm a dark skin, five, six, skinny little monster Still a star player, I'll find anybody roster so Sophisticated gangster, so I could be a mobster. And the fake who be acting little Oscars. Son and all these trumps telling Maury I'm the father. I'm the dream husband to anybody's daughter. Only calling shots, cause I'm the top shot caller. If you stick 
up with the kids, tell them rip, don't bother. Do you rock with me? Do you rock with me? Then don't stop hear me. Then don't stop hear me. And do you rock with me? Do you rock with me? They don't stop hear me. They don't stop hear me. Thank you, Hamilton Youth Poets, for such an amazing performance. And congratulations once again to Susan Evans Shaw for her Lifetime Achievement Award. The sponsors of this year's City of Hamilton Arts Awards are IPC Securities, BLR, Core Urban Inc., DPAI, The Insight Foundation, and the Hamilton Community Foundation. With in-kind support from Hamilton Spectator, Banco Media, and View Magazine. We sincerely thank every one of them for their ongoing support of the arts in Hamilton. So, this wraps up the first episode of the 2020 City of Hamilton Arts Awards. Be sure to like and share the video so we can continue celebrating all of the 2020 Arts Awards nominees and winners and give them the love they deserve. <laughs> this video and all future videos will be posted on the Arts Awards Facebook page and at www.hamilton.ca slash arts awards. Join our next watch party on June 14th at 7 p.m. where we will announce the winners of theater, visual arts, and fine craft. And remember, stay creative and stay classy, Hamilton.